Yes, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Celtic View podcast for this special Cult Heroes series. I'm Ryan Marr, and usually each week we sit down with a famous face from Celtic's past to go through their club history. But this week, as you can probably tell, we're going to do things a little bit differently because we're joined by the club captain, Cal McGregor. Cal, thanks very much for, for coming along. No problem. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Um, before we get into things, I can't have you here without asking about this season. Um, there's still plenty of football left to be played, but things are going pretty well, eh? Yeah, it's been good. It's been a good wee period. Um, the boys have been excellent. Manager's been excellent. So, you know, like you said, now towards the end of the season, uh, we've got eight league games to go, hopefully a few in the cup. Um, so it's a big period, but, you know, we just keep working the way we have done so far this season. You know, stay humble, keep working. And hopefully by the end of the season, then we'll have achieved our goals. Mm -hmm. And for you personally as well, taking on the mantle of club captain this season, you've had a kind of slightly different positional change as well, playing in the base of that midfield. How do you find things individually? Yeah, it's been good. Um, like you said, different role, different role within the team and the squad as well, which, you know, just getting used to that, you know, how to deal with the players and, and things like that. But it's been brilliant. It's something that I've really enjoyed, learning on the job all the time. Um, and like I said, the players have been first class you know, absolutely excellent the way they've applied themselves all season and, and then that makes my job easy as well. So, um, you know, just on the positional one as well, you know, playing a lot bit deeper, getting a lot of the ball, um, starting a lot of the attacks as well, which is good. Um, so not something that I've, I've really enjoyed as well. And, and like I said, it's a big period coming up. So everyone just needs to stay on it 100%. And like I said, at the end of the season, hopefully we've achieved what we want to do. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, let's get on to the, the topic then. So this is all about heroes from your, your past of, of watching Celtic. But before we get into specific names, I just want to know a little bit more about what sort of era are we talking about? When did you start really getting to involve yourself in the club and watch the club? I think, you know, pretty early on, to be honest. Like, I was, I was here as a young kid at eight. So, you know, pretty much as much as I could play football and, you know, walk and talk and these kind of things. So, you know, the, club, the, the club's been a massive, massive part of my whole childhood as well. Um, and, and like I said, playing playing for the club since I was eight years old, it's you're in here five, six days a week, um, at eight years old, nine years old, and you know it does. It just you totally immerse yourself in the club, and uh, and like I said, now for me to be the, the club captain and uh, and trying to lead things, then you know it's, it's a dream come true for me. Starting you know such a, short, a, a young boy at, at that age, and and now having the privilege to do it um, is is amazing. Ah, that's every. Celtic fans dream isn't it when you're that age like you, you probably don't ever expect that's actually going to happen do you? No I don't think so I think you know obviously you, you set out with the best intentions of you know I want to be a footballer and you know you come into this this club at eight year old and you know all you're thinking about doing is getting to the under nines and then getting to under tens and and then the whole thing just sort of snowballs for there and you know when you get the chance to come in full time that's when it kind of hits you that you know you've you've got a huge opportunity and and you don't want to waste it. So I think that's when, you know, the realisation of, you know, you're really close um, kicks in at that point. And then, you know, you, you do anything to, to, to pull on that jersey for the first time. And, you know, like I said, to be standing here or sitting here, you know, nearly 400 appearances later, then it's, you know, you've got to pinch yourself sometimes mm -hmm. to, to really realise where you are. And, you know, I'm so lucky that this club have stuck by me, you know, throughout the years as well. And, you know, all I want to do is just repay them with, with how much faith they had in me. Because mm. that's like 20 years on now, eight years old, 28 now. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a long time not to make you feel old. I think anything, I'm but... older than some of the furniture in here. I think that's it. <laughs> but, I mean, looking back that then, 20 years ago, so that's probably like Martin O'Neill's era back then you were watching. What's your memories of watching those teams? Yeah, like you said, Martin O'Neill's team, you know, Craig Bellamy, guys like that. Um, just like real sort of superstars in the game, you know, coming up to, to, to Celtic and playing, you know, I think Aidan McGeady's as well, you know, just a little bit after that, obviously, but those were the types of guys that, you know, you just looked at and you thought, I want a bit of that, and obviously a really successful period at the club, Seville, um, you know, really unlucky that night as well, so, you know, that's the, I think when you touch on it being a, a young person at that at that time, and you see where the club is, is at in terms of prestige and getting to these finals in European football, that's when you really realise that you're at a special club because you, know, you, you don't get many clubs that, that mm. have those types of records and you know, get to European finals and win season after season, win league titles, league cups. You know, it's, a, it's a huge, huge club and a huge responsibility that 
you know, now we're fast forwarding twenty years, obviously. But at yeah. that point, you you just realise how big a football club it is, and if you want to be part of it, you have to be successful as well. Mm-hmm. Do you remember much of Seville back then? Have you got many memories of it? No, no, like um, no, loads and loads. Obviously, cause I was still pretty young at the time, but I just remember, you know, the, the travelling fans. There's a hundred thousand people or something in, in <laughs> Seville, which is uh, again you touch on the the special bond that the club has with the supporters. You know, you, you're not going to get hundred thousand supporters no. going over to a European final and just take over the whole city. Um, obviously, you see the pictures. I think there's pictures going down the the main stairway here as well, and. Every time you walk past it, you remember it as well. So that's I think that's what makes the club special in, in terms of the support that they have. You know, even going back a little bit disappointing, obviously when we when we go to to Norway a couple of weeks ago, but there's not many supporters that are at different clubs that are making that journey to to come and watch their team play. And you know, we're always cautious of that as players that these guys spend their, their hard earned money to come and watch us play. So we have then a responsibility to make sure that we're at a certain standard and we don't drop below that. Um, but I think that's what makes it special for the players to, to play for a club which, you know, people will, will follow, you know, the length and breadth of the country to, to, to watch them play. Mm. And like I said, that that's what makes it special for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think for me, when I think back of my sort of big moments when I was a first started supporting a club, it's kind of those European nights that do stand out. So for yourself, is that the same? Is there anything in particular that stands out? Yeah, I think like you said, it's, it's the big big European nights. You think, uh, you know, Man United at home, uh, even Shakhtar Donetsk. Been here for these games? I was here, I was ball yeah. for these games. So, Brilliant. you know, I remember obviously the kind of younger ones at the time with ball boy like every weekend at the home games. And then it was like Champions League night would come around, but there would only be... I think we'd be two. So be two spots behind the goals, two on each side. So it was like limited amount of numbers mm-hmm. for the league games. They would just shove an extra chair in, and whoever <laughs> was there would, would ball boy. But it was almost like a selection process that you got picked to be a ball boy in the Champions League. You'd have everybody there, obviously the big nights, and you know, we Brian Meehan would be picking the the ball boys, and you'd be trying to jump up so they could see you, and like you wanted to be picked. So it was amazing that I actually was ball boy in you know three or four of the big big nights and. Like I said, the, the ones that I can I can remember, you know, really vividly, you know, Nakamura's free kick, the whole place just. Uh, uh, you do you know, remember where you were sitting for that? I was sitting like right hand side of the dugout, just after the away dugout, so just uh-huh. on the right hand side okay. in the main stand. It was, you know, the whole place just erupted, and you just look at the next ball point, you just take <laughs> off the toys are jumping on each other, and <laughs> the whole place is going crazy. But you know, because we were in the youth team as well at the time, yeah. You sort of half like watching the game and you're watching it properly to see, right, you know, what is the level like? I want to get to this level one day and, and you're always watching it as a as a footballer as well as a fan as well. And just remember that free kick going in and the whole place just erupting and you just think to yourself, you know, one day I want that to be me, I want to be the scorer of that goal and the whole stadium's going crazy. And those are the you know, the memories that really ignite something inside you that makes you want to be a footballer at this club and and like I say, just going back to, to those two in particular, probably, those were really, really special ones for me, I think. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Nakamura is a left footer. You're probably studying him even closer as well at that age. <laughs> oh, he was, he was a proper technician, wasn't he? He, uh, he was some footballer. And, and like you say, left-footed. Um, just a real classy, you know, classy footballer. Um, you know, the team was littered with him at that point as well. Um, but again, like, you, just, you just try to get to that level. You see someone of that ilk... Um, taking free kicks and you know corners, putting them on the money every time, mm-hmm. and you know he was like I said, he was he's a special footballer, and and that's the type of guys that you would you would look to when you were you know watching it for the side of the pitch. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a couple of players earlier, earlier on, the Giddies and Bellamy. So going to like specifics of players that you really looked up to, are they two of the main ones? Is there any other names that stick out? Uh, I think McGee was was probably the one when I was especially coming through because I, I played a wee bit more off the left when I was younger. Um, and and he would be like the one kind of coming through the, the youth team, um, went into first team. So he kind of followed that similar path of, and I was thinking, thinking right, you know, who who do I watch to try and emulate that type of success? And, and he was the one where, like I said, with ball boy every week. So I just watch him. Like, what does he do? And then you take it back to the youth team and try and do that. And I wasn't as good as that, obviously, but <laughs> it was uh, it turns out my positions in the middle of the park. So. Um, but no, it's just guys like that, you know, obviously you, you, you then look at Roy Keynes as well coming up, make a big impact players-wise, even Bruni as well, you know, a little bit later on than that mm-hmm. as well. But um, 
you know, those were the kind of big sort of characters that you looked at that could, you know, could handle the pressure and, you know, have that personality to play for the club. And um, like I said, it was full of stars as well. You, you know, you think uh, Benny Good at Hesslink, he's a guy who scored big goals and, and big games. Um, you know, like I said, there was, there was, there was plenty of them. Um, yeah. And McGeady as well, probably because you were in the youth team. So I imagine in those days that he was kind of like the poster boy back then of like, this is what you can achieve. Exactly, that's exactly what, um, you know, Tommy, God rest him as well. Um, that was exactly what he used to say, watch people. Like, guys that are there now, just watch them, see what they do, mm. follow everything they do. And and, uh, and that was the example, because, you know, these guys had made the step up and, and had what it took. And it was just trying to watch their behaviours, you know, as much as possible to, to see what they did off the pitch, on the pitch, um, to, to have that impact. And, and like I said, Tommy was... He was a real role model for the academy as well. He's like, you know, he would obviously be first team coach, and then he would come down to Barrowfield at five o'clock, and you know, me, Jimmy, the groundsman, would be saying, you know, I need to turn the floodlights off, and the boys at school in the morning, he'd be like, no, 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 more corners, more free kicks, and that. So Tommy just wanted to be on the training pitch constantly, and for us, like, who better to, to be on the training pitch and you know, coaching you or, or standing watching um, your session? So. You know, obviously, ten years old or eleven years old, you don't want to come off the pitch anyway. But yeah. especially when with someone like Tommy Burns is, is coaching the session, then you're like, oh, stay all night. Like this is <laughs> this is amazing. So, um, you know, those are the kind of real special moments. Like growing up and, and being at Barrowfield, you could see Celtic Park in the background as well, and that's where you had to aspire to get to. And, and like I said, Tommy was a, a huge, huge part in that as well. Mm -hmm. How influential do you think he was as a person, like for yourself and guys like Aidan McGeady's, like, because we've got such a good history of bringing through young players, and you think he's been really integral in that? He was, uh, he was huge in it. Um, like I say, just his enthusiasm for football as well. You know, you don't really realise it at that age, but you know, even just to put in those hours of you know being first team coach, you kind of get an idea of what the first team coaches are doing on a day to day basis now because you're a little bit older. So he then was doing all that and more, and mm -hmm. coming down to the, watch the youth team at 10 years old, do you know what I mean? So it was, he didn't need to do that, but that was just how special a person he was, that he wanted to let everybody know, you know, whether you were 8, 9, 10, 18, I'm watching you, mm -hmm. and I'm watching your progression. So that gave, the, especially gave me, like, that real sense of, you know, I've got a real good chance here, you've got guys like Tommy Burns coming to watch you training at 10 years old, and, and taking parts of the session. So he was, he was a massive influence, um, especially on myself, but just in the youth setup in general. I, I think he was, I think he was huge. Brilliant, brilliant. So going back more specifically to players again. So we were saying then is Aidan McGeady would he been the sort of the poster boy in your bedroom back then at, at that age of person you looked up to the most? Or? I, I think so. Obviously there was there was loads and loads of them, um, you know, top players and that. But I, I think more. Selfishly, just for me as like being an academy boy, he would be the one. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he had some massive impacts, obviously at Celtic as well. You know, you know, just picking him because he was a youth player that made the first team. You know, like go back to the, the Shakhtar Donetsk game at eighty nine minutes. He's taking his winger, he's taking his full back on, gets a cross in, and and the and the team score and it's two one. So just, uh, I j just maybe a little bit selfishly, like I, just because he made the same path, then and I would have said that I watched him. You know, probably a lot more closer than, than mm -hmm. what I watched. You know, anyone else. And but like I said, they were all top players. Does any specific moment stand out from McGeady? You mentioned that kind of moment there against Shakhtar Donetsk. Any sort of goals or anything else that stand out from from his time? I remember the cup final. It was the league cup final. Uh, Rangers. Aye, and he was like electric. Mm -hmm. He was unplayable that day. And again, I remember watching at Hamden. I just think how good's this guy, like, he's actually just tearing people up, like, it's so good, like, ability, passing, crossing, shooting, like I said, he was just electric, um, that's probably one, and again, like, in a big, massive game for the club, he steps up, delivers that kind of performance, so, um, I would say that, that was a, probably a big moment as well. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get a chance to train him at all? Uh, maybe once, I think, I think once. And were you a bit kind of... When you I had that opportunity of it to start. I was just in, to be honest, it was just I know everybody here at that point, and you were like, hey, I'm going to speak to him and just take a back step. But I think that's what it does to you. The, the first team, when you first go up, and that probably would have been maybe, I don't know, 15 or 16 at that time, yeah. when you're training with them for the first time, probably need 
couple of bodies and you know somebody gives you the shout and you're training with the youth team you're like alright okay <laughs> <laughs> you sure <laughs> you, you get thrown into the session butterflies and, and stuff aye, like that's and... it aye so it's, uh, you always remember that you know what I mean you're first couple of times up the first team and you're, you're just nervous and like right here who's the best player I'll just give it to him and make myself <laughs> look good and it's just that like kind of progression as you get older but um you know, like you said, that team was littered full of, full of stars and you just go and you're like, yeah, you have it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, for you now, it's almost like a, a 360 because like, you're going to be like that to so many fans now, as the hero for them. You're going to be like that for so many young players coming through as well. So like, do you kind of feel that responsibility in a way as well of like people recognise you as a, as a hero in their, in their minds? Uh, yeah, I think obviously, like you said, that there will be you know kids out there and, and like you said, young players looking... Um, looking at the first team at the minute and you know they'll be selecting their kind of role model in, in, in that sense so you do you know you, you're fully aware that you, you are that kind of role model and you try and do things the right way um, and especially for like young boys coming up you know I've been in their shoes as well so you try and help them as much as possible you know you try and give them little pointers and you know put the arm in them make them feel welcome and um, but at the same time you know there's still a standard that you have to be at so um, it's, it's striking that balance of you know being nice, but don't be too nice, and mm -hmm. you know you, they've got to feel on edge as well a little bit. So, um, but no, you, you are aware of that, of course, yeah. Um, and like you said, I, I, I try to carry it with me, you know, and, and most things that I'll do, you realise that you've got that responsibility as well. And, and, and like I say, when you, you play for this club, then you know there's a certain standard which you, you don't you try not to drop below. Mm -hmm. And this podcast series is called Cult Heroes. So we've got your hero. Have you got like a a, a cult hero, someone that kind of went a bit under the radar, maybe, or someone else you kind of looked up to. <laughs> like for me, for my that time, it would probably be like Samanas was kind of like my cult hero. I'd right. say around that sort of time. So that's a good one. To be fair, I. To be fair, he was some player as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about underrated. Um, but yeah, you know, guys like Tom Boyd and that's really like go back. Obviously, that's a, a, a lot longer than than, than me being younger, but. You know, just guys like that who played so many games for the club. You know, mm -hmm. we even get one at, at, at uh, Lennox Town, like two, two Lennox Town with, with John Clark and uh, Danny McGrain. And just to see those two every day, you know, they're like outrageous levels of hero yeah. status at this club. And they're at Lennox Town every day and they're still doing the same things. Danny comes in and still does his session every day. <laughs> I think he's still ready for selection. I think he could, he could, play, he could play in there. Um, but just to kind of be in their presence yeah. of guys that have achieved like top, top level stuff and you just see how they carry themselves every day. It's, it's brilliant to observe that and, and and like I said, be a part of it. Um, again, Tommy Burns, like, again, no underrated in, in any stretch of imagination, but just guys like that who you've had the pleasure of, you know, working with and, and dealing with on a daily basis and see what they're like as people. Um, you know, I, I count myself very, very lucky in that sense that I've had so many good role models. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's great, Calm. I think if there's one thing we've learned from this is that Danny McGrain can probably still definitely get, good, get, get his foot on the Get it, Jane. Well, thanks very much for joining us and uh, no all problem. the best for the rest of the season. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.